In this lesson, we're going to begin to talk about editing text. If you'd like to follow along, go to File, Open, and in the Working Files, go into Chapter Number 5, and select a file called To Edit Text. You have to select it, and just click Open. I'm going to begin by zooming in a bit on this page. So I'm going to select my Zoom tool. You can hit your Z key to get there very quickly. And I'm just going to go near the upper left-hand corner of my page and drag straight across the width and let go. Now, if your invisible characters are not showing, go into your Type menu and make sure to select Show Hidden Characters. You can see that switches back and forth between Show and Hide. Let me go back there and turn it on. Show Hidden Characters. Let me go back to my Selection Tool. If you're currently in your Selection Tool, if you want to switch to the Type Tool, just double-click on the text. And it automatically switches to the Type Tool and gives you an insert point wherever you click. But what about selecting text? Well, if I double-click, I select an individual word. If I click three times, I select a full line. If I click four times, let me do it in another paragraph. I'm going to click to get an insert point and then click four times. One, two, three, four. So I selected a whole paragraph. Now, I could click five times. Let me just get an insert point and click five times in a row. One, two, three, four, five. But generally what happens, instead of clicking five times, I almost always go right by five and go to six, which means I just go back to an insert point. So there is a better way to select all of your text in a frame or something called a story, which is all linked text frames that are linked together so the text can flow from one frame to the next. But instead of trying to click five times, I'm going to hit on a Mac, Command A. On a PC, Control A. And that selects all of the text in my entire frame or story. You can see there's a little bit of text on the next page. Let me scroll back up onto page one. Why don't I just click to get an insert point? One of the things you can do is you can actually use your arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate through your text. So if I wanted to move to the right in my text, I could click my right arrow. If I wanted to move to the left, I can click my left arrow. If I wanted to move down the page, you can see it's moving straight down the page until I get to a line that's shorter and it just goes to the end of the line. But if I continue clicking my down arrow, it's pretty much in the same part of the text going down the page. And I, of course, can click my up arrow to move up in the text. But I wonder if I can select text this way. Well, you'll remember from previous lessons, anytime you want to add to a selection, you hold down your shift key. Well. If I have an insert point and I hold down my shift key and then click my right arrow, I'm selecting the text one character at a time. If I now, without letting go of my shift key, hit my left arrow, I'm deselecting text one character at a time for each time I hit my arrow key. But what if I wanted to add text? going from the beginning of this selection towards the left. If I let go of my shift key and then hold it down again and hit my left arrow key, I'm adding text that direction. And if I hit my right arrow key, I'm deselecting that same text. If I wanted to add from the end of the selection, on the right of the selection, I would let go of my shift key and then hit my right arrow key. 
So you do have a lot of control to select individual characters. But also, I can hit Shift and then hit my down arrow key to select additional lines. Or my up arrow key to select less and less lines. Well, what if I'm working with my mouse and I want to select not a full paragraph, I want to select a full paragraph plus more. Generally what I'll do is click four times. One, two, three, four, and not let go of my mouse. And just continue selecting additional paragraphs down my page. So that's a nice little shortcut to help you select exactly the text you want. Now, there is a part of InDesign that not a lot of designers know about or use. I'm going to go under the Edit menu to something called Edit in Story Editor. And it's giving me all the text and showing me what I have selected. And I can actually edit right here without any formatting. So I'm looking at just the text when I'm editing it and not being influenced by the formatting itself. A lot of editors use Story Editor. Let me just scroll down in my Story Editor window. And you can see further down my text, there's a little tiny word that says Overset. And then there's a red line going down the left side of the text. And it looks like there's a bunch of symbols. Let me just go back to my regular text in my layout. And I'm going to scroll down to see what's going on. Let me zoom in even closer. I'm just going to click and drag across the last word. And there's a little symbol there, a little invisible character, which is a page break. So that's what that was in Story Editor. Well, why don't I try to just select that and delete it? Oh, there's another one. Well, let me do it again. I'll select this and, oh, there's still another one. One of the things that Story Editor is really useful for is when you have something going on in your text, that you just can't figure out. You can go into Story Editor. Let me go back in there. I'm gonna to go to Edit, Edit in Story Editor, which is gonna bring that frame to the front again. And you can see it does say Overset Text. And what it is, is a series of page breaks. So let me select everything down to where the text begins again. And I'm just gonna hit Delete. And you can see the rest of the text in the regular layout has come up to join the end of the text that I already had there. Another thing that Story Editor is useful for is when you have text that flows from one frame to another when they're linked together. You want to select and edit text that starts at the end of the first frame and continues in the second frame. It's much easier than being in my layout and having to select text that goes from one frame to another. So it can be very useful. We'll be discussing more about editing text in the next lesson.